What is autocorrelation and why is it a more realistic assumption than the alternative? In order to illustrate what is autocorrelation, I would like to very briefly just recap from the last video that common and important assumption that we make when we scale volatility per that square root rule. So I just have a couple of assumptions here. First, that the daily volatility is 1%. So that's also a daily standard deviation. And then our goal is to scale that one day volatility of 1% to a 10 day volatility. And then you may recall that we can use the square root rule for that. So we can take the 1% daily volatility and we scale it by the square root of time or multiply it by the square root of time. Specifically, we multiply by the square root of the fraction in the numerator is the 10 days to which we are scaling divided by the one day, that's where we're starting. And so that gives us 3.16% is now the 10 day volatility. You may recall, we can uh, scale that volatility in order, in, in order to retrieve a value at risk. So if I want a 95% value at risk, for example, and I'm assuming normality out of convenience, then I can use the Excel's inverse standard normal cumulative distribution function. It just takes the probability or confidence level and returns for me the quantile or deviate, 1.65 standard deviations. And so that's the multiplier that scales that volatility to a 10-day, 95% confident VAR. However, so my point here is, what was that assumption that we made when we scale it, or that we're making? It's IID, right? The specific assumption is in the, that the returns are independent and identically distributed. Independent, identically distributed. And now, what is autocorrelation? Well, first of all, it's a violation of independence. If the returns are correlated, they're not independent. I'll just briefly note that in the last video, somebody commented helpfully and, and reminded me that when we do assume IID, scaling the square root assumes IID, IID in turn is, is making the assumption that our volatility is constant. So it is a simple model. Okay, but back to autocorrelation. Autocorrelation is a violation of IID because correlation is not independence. So to illustrate this another way, let's just say that today the stock price is $10 even, and that tomorrow or the next day it jumps up by 10% to $11. So that's a 10% return, right? That's our return on, um, from today to tomorrow. Now, if these, if the returns are independent or uncorrelated, then um, from tomorrow to the next day, we don't expect that distribution to have any dependence on this distribution or what happened here. They're independent returns. However, if they are positively autocorrelated, and let me just note there, I'm just, I could just say correlation. Autocorrelation is, in this context, just correlation over time. The variable happens to be returns, but when we take a variable and we just look at its correlation to itself lagged in time, that's autocorrelation, also called serial correlation. So autocorrelation is just a fancy term in this context for correlation of the return with lagged instances of itself or subsequent instances of itself. So I have from today to tomorrow this positive 10% return. If the returns are positively correlated, then what that means is it's more likely for that return that is from tomorrow to the next day is also positive. So maybe that's another 10% to up to $12.10. So you see how positive autocorrelation is causing a return that uh, uh, on a day that return goes up, the subsequent day, it's more likely to go up. And so I think you could also think of this as like akin to or analogous to momentum in the asset price. <clears throat> and also notice that 
if this is the case, if this is the property of the returns, if they are positively autocorrelated, perhaps if we, it's not too hard to imagine that the volatility that we compute from these series of returns is, is going to be greater. After all, it goes both directions. If the $10 drops to $9, then positive autocorrelation means it's more likely that the price will continue to drop momentum style. And so you can see how the implication of positive autocorrelation is greater scaled volatility. That's positive autocorrelation. What about it could be negative autocorrelation, negative serial correlation? That would be if from today to tomorrow, the positive jump is 10%. If, they're, if the returns are negatively correlated, that it's more likely the return, the subsequent return is going to change the other direction, maybe come back to $10.05. We could call this a version of mean reversion. Mean reversion has several different contexts, definitions, but this is one of them. Mean reversion is also is negative autocorrelation as opposed to positive autocorrelation. But in both cases, we are not IID because they're not independent. And hopefully you can see that just as the positive autocorrelation increases the volatility relative to what it been if we had just scaled with the square root of time, mean reversion is actually going to decrease that scale volatility. And so finally, I'll just show you that in the Excel and I'm going to put this up on on YouTube so you can you can see it because the scaling factor I'm not going to take the time to go into the math now on the scaling factor but what I would just like to show you that the this that formula implements the intuition that we just looked at as before we have the baseline case here of a 1% daily volatility scaled over 10 days to a 10-day volatility of 3.16%. I also have in here the autocorrelation assumption of zero, which is consistent with the IID. And so you can see down here, we have the same 3.16%. So now I'm just gonna look at two versions here. First, positive autocorrelation. So the correlations, that, that means the correlations are positively correlated over time. I'm gonna give it a value of 0.5, and you'll notice I get a scaling factor here that increases and returns for me a 10-day volatility of 5.10% and see how it's higher than the 3.16% which depended on, which presumed IID. This is now our 10-day scale volatility if there's positive autocorrelation. And it's greater than it would be under the square root rule as we expect. Now I'm going to just model a case of mean reversion. And so I'm just going to say that's negative autocorrelation, a.k.a. mean reversion, and the, t and the scaling factor adjusts. And my 10-day volatility standard deviation is now only 1.94% lower than the square root rule scaled volatility. And so that's the autocorrelation. I did have up here also the algebraic uh, representation so you can see that this that's when the return today is actually correlated to its lagged value see Greek row is a correlation to itself it's autoregressive on itself uh, so I hope that's helpful thank you